Hi guys, welcome back. This is part five of the um, Mercury Tiger Moth build. <laughs> Start that again, eh? Couldn't remember what it was. Hi guys, Cliff here. This is part five of the Mercury Tiger Moth RC conversion build. And I'm just looking at the model thinking where I'm going to put stuff. So what I'll do, I'll just tilt you down. And uh, I know um, a couple of you have said uh, on previous parts that uh, you'd be interested to see how I go about fitting the radio gear. So uh, you can scratch your head along with me. I'll just tilt you down. OK, so what I've got, um, I've got a pair of servos, the nine gram servos out of an old uh, fun fighter model but they're a nice pair and they sit nicely I've also got the tray that it came out of so I'm wondering if I can actually utilize a bit of this plywood just to make life easy for myself in fitting it in there's also a battery tray here with some ventilation holes in built in I might be able to use because the plane is just about the same width as the model it came out of so might be able to use it. Uh, the astute amongst you may spot that I filled those lightning holes in in the side. Uh, I'm not entirely happy with them because the bolster, I put some old bolster in but it's still lighter than the original but I don't know. It, I think it looks better for being like that and probably a little bit stronger. So what I've got I've got an old Spectrum AR600, uh, it's a 10 years old probably receiver, but it works okay, uh, which I can put in. I've got the brushless speed controller, which also has to go in. And the motor is already in. All right, let's have a look then. What I thought I might do is to fix the speed controller up, see where that sits, and then work out where the battery tray may be, and and then the servos. I haven't yet decided on... Um, <laughs> yes I have decided. I'm going to use snakes. Now when I unplugged this I knew that I would probably have fun reconnecting it because it's so far down in the uh, fuselage. Won't be too bad actually if I thread this up through from the bottom. The thing to consider when you're fitting radio gear in is uh, the biggest consideration is the centre of gravity really. As long as you have the ability to move the um, battery around then setting the CRG is a piece of cake. Right, I mark them up so I know that's the right way around. So Just pop those wires down into there. The speed controller just naturally finds its own little place down under the motor in the airstream quite nicely. I'm going to open up the top of the cowl a bit uh, to let a little bit more air in over the motor and it'll go round the motor down underneath through the speak over the speed controller and and out and up through the hatches and what have you so there will be plenty of air movement. Receiver. Now this particular receiver is it's quite old fashioned. It's got this quite long aerial wire with a little strip bit on the end. And that strip bit is the actual bit that picks up the signal. So when you fit the receiver you want to have them. This one coming out sideways, that one going down lengthwise. So they're like an L shape. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, you want to you want the receiver to be at least three or four inches, ten centimeters or so, away from the ESC. Certainly, there's another hollow between the cockpits here. You can see that could go up there. So really, it's just the servos. So a pair of servos. They either go in the cockpit here. in the cockpit. I could put a cockpit floor in and mount these servos so as you don't see them back there. I 
think that's probably a good place for them actually. Yeah. They're out of the way without being too far from the receiver to plug in. Got to think of these things. So let's just have a look at this piece of plywood. Okay guys, I've um, driven the plywood plate down a bit and it sits in there beautifully, look at that. But there's still plenty of room in, inside there to put a false floor in. And they look about the right place. Next job is to try and align the push rods with the control surfaces. Obviously it's pretty uniform as to which side comes out. Doesn't matter which side either comes out to be honest. So what I think I'll do is to pop the tailplane on and work out exactly where I'm going to bring the push rod out. And I'll need to put a little bit of balsa wood to take it through the structure. Right, that come out a bit like that. So the horn. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to put a little bit of wood in here to mount the horn on, so I can do that now. So you saw this last night. Servers are in, so I've just glued in a pair of plates in the back here for where the push rods are going to come out. I've put the elevator push rod in already and this one should just squeeze in there like that. I just want a bit more of an angle now I think so a little bit straighter. They're still over length. I'll cut them in a minute. But just putting that on like that The control horn will be up here on this piece of wood I've inserted. Uh, that would be about the right height. I've got a little bit of play there. So the crossbars, I've probably used, um, got a few scraps of 1 8 here actually. Let's put that roughly there. I can slide those across and glue them in where they need to be to line up with the servo. So it's supported there, it's supported there. You could, if you wanted, put a pair here. What you don't want is the control surface to m to move and these to bend. I don't think they will, actually. They're pretty stiff. Okay, so that's where I've got so far. Yeah. So I'm going to cut the push rods to length. I can do that, the outers, and get those fixed up into position. Okay, guys, see you soon. So a little update. I put two supports top and bottom on that part of the fuse launch and that part there I've centered the servers up using the servo tester and worked them and I've worked out that the outers can't be any further forward than that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to infill in between the snakes with a little bit of one eighth square a little Bit of CA there, a little bit on there. So, got my center piece in, and all I've got to do now is to cut the two outer pieces there and there. That push rod is now held beautifully between those formers in that position. I'll do the same on this end one here. Okay, there we are. So that's those push rods secured. You see they're pretty much in the line they want to be. A little bit of movement there, but I'll do the same at the, on the back ones now. So <clears throat> I thought it'd be rather fun just to add a little cross brace right at the very end, a little diagonal one, just to take into account the twisting of the um, outers. So I've taken the inner out of uh, this one, 
and I'll put a little, I've roughed it up and glued it in place. I think I might mark this one now because they're, they're a bit difficult to cut. So I think I might cut it to there. Like that. So then I'll pull that one out. Like that. So we just thread that one back in. Through there. Through all my little holes. You can't see, you can't do this once she's covered, so. What we absolutely have to avoid though is getting any CA into the inside of this shoe. Line that up with that one and drop some CA on it. Okay, so push rods are installed. Don't look too bad, I don't think. They're really well secured anyway, so that's nice. So this is the plywood, 16th plywood tray. It's a little bit warped. Came out of the Fun Fighter. But I quite like the fact it's got a um, cheese board effect because the battery retaining strap does fit into those holes quite nicely. Um, can I use it? So I've cut this down, uh, notched it, and I think it might just fit in here. It'd be a shame not to use it, as it's actually designed for this very purpose. Oh, I think this could work, guys. How about that? I've got to leave the back a uh, bit clear for the receiver. In fact, look at that, it's just dropped down to the base of that former, um, which takes it at a nice slope to accept the battery at, at, at an angle. Yeah, but it can get, so I can adjust the CAG and put it right down over the receiver if necessary, or bring it all the way up to there. That's a big adjustment from there down to there. Anything else will just have to be ballasted. So I think I will glue it in at that angle. Seems to fit there rather nicely. Sounds really good actually because any heat from the battery now can just escape straight up through the uh, floor of the front cockpit. <laughs> that. And also because heat from the um, ESC can also blow back and come right out of there as well. Yeah, I've got to think about um, a floor now, a hatch, some sort of hatch. So I'll be back soon. Right, guys, time for an update. I've made a pair of hatches. Uh, so the bottom's all done now. Uh, I couldn't indent it in between the um, stringers as plans detail because they've got to be hatches. But I don't think anybody will notice a sixteenth of an inch on the bottom of the plane. So I've got two, the battery hatch, which is that one there. Oh, ignore that, that doesn't do that. That comes off like that. Uh, just put a magnet in there and a couple of little balsa hooks on the back. So that's nice and simple. So when I change the battery, it'll be a case of popping off, sliding the battery out between the undercarriage legs changing it. Um, I've also put the hatch on the back which is obviously for very occasional use if I need to. I'll probably put a little strap on there to help it open but I just pull it then instead of using the fingers from the inside. Um, but that just pops off. Same little hooks at the back, balsa hooks. Pair of magnets on the front. Don't want that one coming off flight particularly. Don't want any of them coming off. Uh, I used to a pair of magnets because I didn't want it sort of 
showing a gap on the ends I want it pulled down tight into the corners so uh, that probably completes the radio installation up to now then so thanks for checking in and I'll see you soon